wanted to show you this, what my son bought for me for Christmas last year. It's so precious. <laughs> I was really impressed with the kids at Franklin, that awesome club that built this mural. And my son went and took a picture of where I was. And, uh, and they made this awesome thousand piece puzzle. <laughs> I started working with the Black Panther Party back in 1969, 70. I was in uh, Seattle Central Community College at the time. I had been working with the free breakfast programs and just loving it and, and appreciating that the Black Panthers cared so much. So they weren't just a, a black uh, leather jacket beret stomping, gun-toting party. They cared about the community, and it was what I wanted. <laughs> Things needed to change. I fight for justice and what's right. I lived in the CD, and I went to seven different elementary schools. That was mostly because my stepfather moved us around so much. It was grueling. Then we lived in the projects. Well, I thought I was a middle class person when I was living in the projects because we had so much space. Heels of grass, you know, we could run and play on it. My own bedroom and, and there were four of us kids, curvy lanes and couldn't tell me <laughs> we weren't middle class because my teacher told me that most of the people in this country are middle class. Yeah. So. And those were all the people I knew. We weren't so sad about having to eat government cheese or, or beans a lot, you know. <laughs> it was a way of life. And, and my, mo my mother was awesome. She would take us to every free event that popped up in the city. My mom was a day worker, washing toilets. <laughs> Ooh, and I hated, hated the welfare office coming over to the house and wanting to look through the closets. I didn't like that we, our, our rights weren't being respected. I didn't like police brutality. But as I got older and saw more real poverty, I didn't like the poverty the most. It was horrible. I didn't like that at all. It's got to change. And Black Panthers were about revolution, which means change. Yes, I mean business. After I left college, I lived here seven days a week. And we would sit in a perch and look out just slits. There would just be a, 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 a lever. You'd raise it up and you can look down on the street. I always get that question, what was it like to be a woman in the Black Panther Party? I believe that women joined the Black Panther Party because of the survival programs. More so because we're willing to do the work, we're willing to help our folks, our kids, and we want our, everyone's lives to be better. So, so we join and we do the work. But surprisingly, we weren't pushed into the kitchen to cook, clean, polish, it, none of that stuff. We had duties and we had uh, a list of duties and we rotated between all of us. Women did the cooking, men did the cooking. Men did the cleaning, women did the cleaning. It was shared duties, including being a security guard. Everyone would do the jobs. We did take lessons in cleaning guns, taking them apart, of course, putting them back together. And we had some of that almost every night so that we'd get very comfortable with it, very polished with it. Um, and then we knew how to take care of the weapons 
and, and safety. I'm strategizing, I'm blessed, I guess, and yes, I'm gonna be sticking around. Oh, yeah, that's a pig. <laughs> it wasn't like that. The pigs were not caring. This does not represent <laughs> that era. They were afraid of the Black Panthers, and so they were hostile towards the Black Panthers. J. Edgar Hoover, they did not want any citizens to like us or support us or think that we're doing anything good because he wanted to dismantle everything we did, to kill off people if they have to or felt they had to, and they made it hard. Actually, the FBI-led raid, they talked to the mayor and said, you know, get ready, we're coming to town and we're going to take that office out. And the mayor says, no, you can't do that. And that was Wes Ullman. And uh, he stopped them from coming in. But we were ready. <laughs> I remember shaking a little. I fight for justice and what's wrong. In 71 and for a 72 election, we moved down to California, to Oakland, to help with the campaign to run Bobby for, Bobby Seale for mayor and Elaine Brown for city councilwoman. Many of the chapters sent most of their members to Oakland. So it was a big number of people that were down there going door to door talking to people, working with the programs there. And it was a good time. We didn't win, but we made a mark. What we believe, to, to love, to unite, to respect, to build, build our communities, build our health, build our lives, we started procuring our uh, furniture for the free clinic, because we've been talking to Dr. John Green, and he was going to help us get equipment. And we moved in. We were living in this house here on between 21st and 22nd in Union. I fight for justice. I fight for justice. We, we never would have imagined that would have grown to, to this and to that. You won't, you won't close the door on anybody coming into the clinic and that, that you serve everybody and you serve them with a, a great deal of respect. I, I can't say that there'd be anything more. I went to school, I became a nurse for Thirty some years, I was doing my thing with the union and with the nurses' organization, but it wasn't real political. I wasn't out on the street. But the young people, I like what they've done. They've got connected to the changes in the prisons, the injustice there. That's major, and they've done a lot more protesting, and it shows. They're they're becoming leaders themselves. Queen. 